So please welcome to the stage Raghu Ayaswamy, the VP and Head of Engineering Services at Tata Consultancy Services, TCS. And he's going to talk about transformation to a model-based connected digital enterprise. Raghu? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Very glad to be here in this PLM world. Uh, I'd like to take the next 15 minutes to talk through this topic, transformation to a model-based connected digital enterprise. All these terms we keep hearing very often. Um, it's packed like a buzzwords, but this has profound meaning in the context of engineering and manufacturing and the entire community here uh, in, in the PLM world. And how does that impact? What does it really contextually now changing compared to what we have been doing in the past? And how do we derive the value and the benefit out of this? And what is the business case in terms of adapting to a digital connected enterprise is what we are going to see in this presentation. Digital technologies, today, the entire IT world is talking about digital technologies, cloud, mobility, big data, analytics. But the term digital is not new. It's not new for engineering. It's not new for manufacturing. We have been using digital technologies for many years. We have adopted digital 3D designs, <coughs> virtual manufacturing through digital simulations, and taking the design into manufacturing directly through uh, integrated design to manufacturing and adapted some of the field service monitoring also. In utilities, we have been doing service monitoring for many years. So as engineers, as manufacturing teams, many of us here, digital per se is not a new, fundamentally different word. It has been in use in, for us for more than two decades or more than that. But what is changing? What's important here in terms of in the new world of digital. Fundamentally, there are two things. One is, in the previous world of digital, information were siloed. Not because it is designed that way, but more because of the communication infrastructure, storage infrastructure, and many limitations in the way information is handled uh, kind of made it available as a silo mode. And the data has been very static. We couldn't add real-time information about a product performance or a plant manufacturing into that. And obviously, it is time insensitive, and it actually lacked the complete value chain information. So even though some of these technologies have really helped us in improving the design cycle time, cutting down prototypes, increasing productivity in the shop floor, but truly, the entire value in the value chain could not be captured because of the limitations in those technologies in these days. So what is, what is the impact? What is changing? How the ecosystem is now changing? As you probably see here, in the digital divide from the present to the future state, the demands from the customer is changing uh, predominantly in terms of it's instead of business to business, it is becoming business to business to consumers. And cons consumers want variations. Imagine the number of models of variations we are having in a ubiquitous item like a smartphone, automobile. Every industry is going through a huge variety and variation and customer-specific manufacturing requirements. New product introduction. People are going to social media and other channels to extract what customers are feeling about the product. They are able to build that information through social media analysis into the product designs. Uh, recently, we did a project for uh, Jaguar Land Rover. They collected the information from around the world through the social media interactions, comments, feedbacks, and loyalty uh, comp points. And from that, they could actually come out with 110 features that will go into their future models into the car. So manufacturing is also going through huge changes from just the preventive maintenance into predictive maintenance. 
and not just predictive maintenance, how can I really combine various automation and operational effectiveness? Supply chain. Today, many manufacturers are adopting multiple plants, multiple dealerships, sites, and the visibility demands on the supply chain is quite huge. So all of this ecosystem has transformed. Our technologies had limitations, the silos I talked about. The ecosystem is transformed. So that is putting the demand and the context for this digital connected transformation to the transformation of that enterprise. So our need, therefore, is coming from a model-based connected digital enterprise that connects all the way from the marketing conceptual design through the value cycle to manufacturing into the supply chain and even to the extent of services and the performance monitoring of the product and bringing all the information back. So when we say this, it is a connected enterprise, and a lot of time this word connected is uh, uh, kind of used in, uh, not in the appropriate context, because many times the connected is all about putting some sensors into a product and gathering information to, say, internet or any common uh, cloud. But connected is not about it. Connected is about getting the state information, getting the process information, and getting how this whole product, the, the so-called digital surrogate or the digital twin that represents the physical asset is going through in terms of the process for the value chain and having that real-time information. And it is closed loop system. Uh, the reason it is closed loop is we are not just selling the product and it is going to the consumers and we don't get to see how the consumer have really been using it and what kind of performance it is providing. Does it meet the design requirements? Does it satisfy the end customers? And what kind of quality issues that we foresee after the product has been delivered? Here this connected enterprise actually provide the intelligence back to the OEM, to the manufacturing, so that I'm able to really understand how my product has really performed. So if you really see the value cycle in this scenario, uh, it is a transformation across the value chain. Our traditional value chain has been, as I explained, going from the plan manufacturing to sales and service with enterprise data sources coming from design, manufacturing, and services. But today, we can actually complete this cycle through closed loop. So it is putting the products in service. We are collecting the information, be it an automotive, or an aero engine, or an equipment. It can be applied to multiple industries, multiple segments. And the power of information that you are getting there in a cloud platform, and be able to provide this performance insights back into the product that provides the power of connected digital system. And I would like to repeat here because a lot of time, unless this value chain is transformed by optimizing at one process, digitizing one process or a particular subsystem, will not have the complete effect in terms of making the transformation. So today, the biggest advantage we are getting is, first, there are tools cloud, big data, and analytics tools that are available for us to actually implement this transformative connected digital enterprise solutions. Second, there is techniques that are available to further improve the performance and get more benefit out of the value chain. So today, uh, probabilistic methods using cognitive computing or machine learning it's all available for us to understand the performance of the machinery, performance of the equipment, and be able to take real-time immediate decisions that would impact the value chain performance. And third, it is, again, important is, is it has closed the loop between the design to manufacture to service and bringing that information back. So this is the powerful transformation we are seeing in the industry. So what does it mean? How can it be made relevant in the context of our business and the processes? So this process that can be reimagined using a connected digital enterprise, it is just endless. 
the possibilities are really endless. Multiple value generation scenarios can definitely be reimagined. So I have put some four of them. Uh, one is product performance and real-time supply chain visibility, where a manufacturer can actually assess the product's performance and various components. And you can do a prognosis of the real life left in those parts or components and use that real-time information to order spare parts inventory and provide a real-time inventory replenishment to the end customer. Say, take, for example, an elevator industry. Take, for example, a mining equipment. Take, for example, oil rig industry. An oil rig that it's not working for one hour is going to cost $100,000 loss for the rig operator. So in every industry that we see in the manufacturing, transformation can be applied using this connected digital enterprise. Take this case of product reliability and cost management from real-time performance data. I will show, show a case study we just worked on uh, last year with one of the automotive manufacturers for this. Process capability variation. It's a huge thing. For example, we have digital manufacturing and we have digital models and we do the designs. But a lot of time due to the process variations in the actual manufacturing, the design intent is not fully realized. But the product cannot be discarded for that because of the cost associated with it. If we can translate the actual manufacturing data into the assembly information and use it for commissioning purposes, then it fundamentally minimizes the wastage as well as increases the productivity of the processes. So a connected digital enterprise therefore offers us a multitude of possibilities for us to imagine. The business case scenarios can really be fundamentally transformative, can really be impacting the value generation in the company. I will just walk you through a couple of case studies before I close this. Uh, this is for a Japanese uh, OEM. We design and develop a diagnostics device, and many of you have been using diagnostic device nowadays. It has become common with the, the onboard diagnostic ports that are available in the automotive. But the whole thing is, this was used in a dealership to find out issues in the product and to correct the issues by looking at so-called uh, uh, diagnostic trouble codes, DTCs, and really help the service technician to address these root causes very quickly. What we did is just elevated this diagnostic information that is getting collected at the dealership, pulled the data into a cloud, and kind of overlapped that data with the warranty system and vehicle data, and put that together with uh, the data mart and, and various analytics and dashboards that we could create, and gave that to a set of users who really made difference in terms of business value generation. Field service people, diagnostic R&D teams, system suppliers, uh, designers, all of them use this information. Just look at this. Uh, the information is real time, so we get continuous information on the diagnostic trigger pulse. So you can see one of them is showing an incidence of 1,512 incidents here at the top current. And then further drilling down, that information is pointing to a malfunction of system X. So obviously, for confidentiality reason, I'm not putting the, which system it is. But basically, it is pointing to a particular system. And then you go through this further drilling of that information, it is kind of getting into which plant these incidents have been occurring far more uh, regularly. And within the plant, they overlap with the vehicle production data onto this. They could see that it was due to a system in November or whatever. And that way, they can actually point that particular defects that has been reported on the particular model of the car is caused due to a quality defect from a supplier and at a particular manufacturing plant. Imagine this kind of information, this kind of root cause analysis, this kind of intelligence and decisions, and going after the actual problem is just impossible in the past. And today, the systems, what has been implemented is providing that possibility. 
Otherwise, the manufacturer would have been continuously paying for the warranty cost, the replacement cost. Today, we can find the problem real time. We can fix the root cause and save the cost that we would otherwise be spending in the warranty cost. So number of such improvements, possibilities are coming through the connected enterprise. This is another project we are working on, and there was a lot of discussions yesterday around digital threats. Um, this is for a customer where we are combining all the information from engineering, manufacturing, and even services into a data lake. And the ability to provide that data lake of information across multiple stakeholders in the company. I may be from an engineering, I may be from supply chain, I may be from the manufacturing product quality team. Every one of us, without uh, any difficulty, able to access the digital thread and get the requisite information from the data lake, and that is really helping improve the NPI time reduction as well as improving the manufacturing uh, processes. So key elements in this digital enterprise, as we summarize, as you can see that model-based system engineering, which is combining the electronics and sy mechanical systems, model-based definitions, and model-based manufacturing, uh, providing through the platform of integrated design to manufacturing, all the way to digital supply chain, service management, and sensor-enabled connected smart factory. All these elements today can lead to the complete connected digital enterprise or industry 4.0 paradigm. And today, in summary, we see that this connected digital enterprise is the path, and, and due to the transformation and the ecosystem we are seeing, it is definitely needed, and it is enabled by the advances we see in the technologies in big data and cognitive computing, and it's not just somewhere in the horizon, it's here and now. We have products in Siemens like Omnio we talked about today a lot. Uh, it provides the efficiency, customer response, and, and the innovation that is needed. Um, and I'm, I'm really glad to have this opportunity to share this, and thank you very much.